So Streamlabs OBS has had a UI facelift since the last time I had covered this program in great detail. So that means we are going to be revisiting the entire program again, covering it in great detail. And there's also some new stuff that they've added that I'm going to be covering as well. So I'm going to start off with the basics, which is navigation. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. All right. So once you have the program installed on the left hand side here, you're going to have some options. Now I'm going to be going through these options in separate videos. That way you can get more information about it. So be sure to go ahead and take a look at the channel and the playlist for those videos as they get uploaded. But the very first one is going to be your editor. That is what you see right here on the first screen. So you have where your stream and everything would be populated in the black box, your mini feed, which is like your activity feed. So when people follow, sub, whatever the case may be, your scenes, your sources, and then all of your audio information. And that is pretty much going to be your editor. Now, Next is going to be the alert box library. And a lot of this stuff is going to be behind the prime paywall. So for a month of prime is like $20 and for a whole year of prime is 150. So it's up to you if that price is justified, but there are a lot of other things that is offered, but you do have some free ones. If you type in free for the alert box, and there's a few other things that will be added in here once you type in free, but they give you some of them to try. So I definitely say, take a look at them, see if you like them. And then you have your themes and you'll have scene themes, widget themes, and then also your tip page themes. So there's going to be some that are going to obviously be behind prime, but then you also can search up free and find some that are going to be in free by just typing in free and search. Then you have your app store. The only thing I've been able to find free in the app store was Raid Shadow Legends, but everything else is behind this paywall of Prime. But this stuff you can add into your stream. So like if you're wanting to have music from like Slipstream or from Pretzel, or maybe you're wanting to do like a Q&A or anything that they pretty much offer here. There's not a whole lot. There's three pages of stuff, but definitely go ahead and give it a look-see and see if there's anything that you wanted to use. Then you have the grow, which in my eyes, it's more of like your analytics, just to kind of see how you're performing, but you can set personal goals and you can even see like how your channels are doing that you have connected to the Streamlabs OBS. And you can also kind of see like how your growth is taking from like a certain point. So like month to month type deal. And that way you can kind of see how your whole entire stream is performing. But I'll go through this in a, another video as well. Then you have the highlighter. I have covered the highlighter in a video already previously, but I will revisit it again. But essentially, this allows you to take clips from your stream and even like videos that maybe you've recorded off stream and you're wanting to turn them into clips and you just don't want to maybe use a full like editor like Premiere or DaVinci or Final Cut or anything like that. You can bring those clips into here and you can edit them and stuff like that. Now it is very limited compared to using an actual editing software, but it's still a good thing to use. And I find it useful for just like basic highlight reels. Then you have prime, which will bring you to their website to give you details about everything that that offers, which for prime you're looking at like all this different stuff. So themes, you can multi-stream, you'll have different types of apps, you'll have a custom tip page, you can do merch, paid sponsorships, and so much more. So again, it really just matters if it's going to be something that you find that's going to benefit you. Then you have the dashboard, which this will give you more detail on certain things. Like you can even set up your alert boxes here. You can have all the different widgets here. Your themes and overlays are here. CloudBot. You can do charities if you're wanting to host your own charities. Then you have the app store, the multi-stream. So I'll go through this as well, but there's some stuff that's not on the Streamlabs software, like having the Twitch panels, the YouTube thumbnails, the logo maker, like a lot of this stuff down here in the branding isn't going to be there. So that is good to still come to the dashboard to access these type of things here. Then you will have CloudBot, which is also a web-based bot 
very similar to like Nightbot and the Stream Elements bot and stuff like that. All this stuff is ran through the website of Streamlabs. So you can do like modules, timers, add quotes, do loyalty points. You can have commands that are custom and a bunch of different stuff. But again, I'll cover this in its own separate video. So then we go down to the layout editor. And I really do like the layout editor. So you have all these different types of layouts that you can use and you can even customize them as well. So if you didn't want to have the mini feed here, but you wanted to have the auto mixer there, then you could switch it up and you can have your auto mixer here and your mini feed there. So there's a bunch of different ones that you can mess with and you can even like create your own tabs, which will then allow you to favorite some. So you can have different profiles for them and everything like that. You can even switch them up if you wanted to have something like this one. So there's just different ones that you can mess with. And then you will have studio mode. I love studio mode. So everything that is done here on the edit side, nobody can see on the live side until you hit transition. So if you're on the starting soon for this screen and you needed to fix something on like your main screen that like you're playing your game on, maybe your webcam box is not showing or something like that, you can fix it on the edit side and they won't see it until you hit transition. So it's really cool. Then of course you have your get help and all your settings. I'll go through the settings in separate videos because there's a lot of stuff to talk about with the settings. So I want to make sure you guys understand those things because that is a very, very, very important part of this program to make sure everything runs right. So then you're also going to have down here is your open performance window. This will let you see your CPU usage, the FPS, if you have any drop frames, what your speed is for your stream and stuff like that. Then we'll have your notification window. So if you get any notifications, it will pop up right here. If you're wanting to test any of your widgets, you can just hit test widget and you'll be able to test like your follow alerts, sub alerts, bits, anything like that. If you're wanting to record with Streamlabs OBS, you can click on the record. You're going to want to set the settings up inside the settings. We'll definitely go over that in other videos. And then you'll also have your replay buffer, something else that I will cover too. Inside of these different sources, so you'll have like your scenes, your sources, the mixer and stuff like that. They have their own individual settings. So each gear will give you a different type of thing to go through. You also have your selective recording. You have where you can group things into folders and of course adding the sources and stuff like that. So I'll be covering all that stuff too. But that pretty much covers the entire navigation of the Streamlabs OBS. Now, I do have my chat pushed away. So this little arrow here will allow me to expand my chat. And the arrow up top will allow me to get rid of my chat. But yeah, if you have any questions about Streamlabs OBS, you can take a look at some of the previous videos I've made on it in the playlist below. And you can also ask me in the comment section as well. But I'm going to be, like I said, revisiting this entire program, going through everything once again, because it is an updated version of it. So I want to make sure you guys are seeing an updated version of the program as well. And even showing some of the newer features that they are adding. And if they add more new features, I'll continue to update the playlist with those new features too. But if you're enjoying stuff like this, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to click the bell icon to get notified. And I'll see you all in the next one. Take care.